noted earlier, feedback is an essential part of formative assessment practice, instruction, and everyday life. But who is the best person to provide feedback? The teacher? Classmates? The students themselves? Yes to all of the above. People in different relationships with the student provide different types of feedback, each from a different perspective, and all are helpful. Earlier, we covered feedback from the teacher, and in this video, we are going to focus on self and peer assessment and the feedback associated with it. One of the key requirements for anyone to provide effective feedback is to set up a classroom environment that is collaborative and in which the students feel safe to both give and receive feedback. The environment requirements are the same as noted earlier in the course. Are students engaged? Do you as a teacher try to connect with students' interests? Are students comfortable asking questions or are they afraid to raise their hand? Are you praising intelligence or recognizing effort and persistence? When teachers provide feedback, it is often a one-way street from teacher to student. Some students take feedback well, while others become defensive and don't listen. The same is true with peer and self-assessment. Although some students may take feedback from a teacher without a problem, these same students may not take feedback well from peers at all. You may find that you need to coach students on delivering feedback and accepting other points of view, regardless of the source, and whether they agree with the feedback provider or not. Additionally, self-feedback is another skill in which students will most likely need some additional coaching. Some students will be harder on themselves than anyone else could ever be, and others may think that self-feedback means an easy A. It is difficult to be able to accurately judge one's success and effort. This skill will help students not only in your classroom, but beyond the classroom walls also. Giving and receiving feedback from a variety of sources takes practice. As the teacher, you may need to provide explicit instruction, tools, and techniques on peer and self-assessment. Don't forget that the goal of feedback from self and peer assessment is to help students meet the established success criteria. You'll probably need to remind the students about this and also remind them about keeping the mindset and environment focused on growth for all. You'll also need to provide many opportunities for the student to practice evaluating their own thinking and the thinking of others. Along with this evaluation, students must be encouraged to think about why they and others think the way they do. Eventually, it will become a part of everyday classroom practice for the teacher and students. When students provide and receive feedback in appropriate ways, you will be surprised at the change in your classroom, especially in terms of creating a respectful climate and culture. Not only will you see this in your classroom, but throughout the entire school.